Hello, everyone, and welcome to All Together Now, the Adult Summer Programming Brainstorming Session. I'm glad to see you here and a lot of folks already active in chat. Thank you. I'm Katrina Harkness. I'm the Adult Learning Consultant here at the Division of Library and Information Services. This year's summer reading theme, All Together Now, Kindness, Friendship, and Unity, gives us a lot of directions to explore. For our format today, I'm going to share a few resources and ideas, and please uh, chime in in the chat if you have additional resources or ideas to share as well. And then we're going to have our guest presenter, Beth Golding, who's our state archivist. And after that, we'll turn the brainstorming session over to you to talk about what you want to talk about. The Florida Braille and Talking Book Library participates in the Collaborative Summer Library Program. Children's, teen, and adult books are available in Braille and audio format. Patrons must be certified to receive services. And as librarians, you can act as the certifying authority. Um, there's a form that a patron fills out and the library uh, librarian uh, certifies, and it can then be emailed back to allow patrons to have access as to those books in Braille and audiobook format. We'll put those links in the chat and you can contact the library if you have any questions about how to certify patrons or about their summer reading program. Also, we'll try and host a webinar at least once a year to help you connect your patrons to these services. We have a number of resources to share with the goal of making the library accessible for all patrons. First, the brand new DLIS adult learning section of our website has resources for programming, professional development, and adult literacy. One of the links that I want to highlight for this discussion is the See Different program from the Florida Division of Blind Services. This program offers virtual and in-person forums, which include demonstrations of assistive tools and technology. They can also ask questions, answer questions you might have about meeting the needs of blind and vision impaired patrons and staff. An additional resource that I'd like to share is the International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions checklist for access to libraries for persons with disabilities. Another consideration making libraries accessible is language. If you're interested in adding multilingual signage to your library, I have a tool that might be helpful. The Library of New South Wales has an online tool with common library phrases professionally translated into 55 languages for use in library signage. They also have a feature where you can uh, request additional phrases if they don't have the phrases in, in their database that you're looking for. I don't know how responsive they are. I haven't tested this out. So if you get a chance to try it and um, you get some information on that, please let me know. Um, I also invite you to join us in our upcoming DLIS discussion, Library Services for Multilingual Communities, which will be Monday, February 27th from 3 to 4. Okay, puzzles. And why this might be a much more powerful programming activity than it first appears. There's a David Attenborough quote that says, no one will protect what they don't care about and no one will care about what they've never experienced. He was talking about our natural world, but I think it also applies to the importance of libraries, museums, and archives in our own sense of place and community as it relates to this theme. One of the activities in the Collaborative Summer Library Program Manual is team puzzling. This is a great way to bring people together for a common goal of finishing that puzzle. They have a number of suggestions for how to structure the activities. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't been back to their website in a while, they've added a lot of new activities and uh, resources on their web page. So if you haven't been there in a while, you might check back um, for something uh, new, including a lot of uh, Spanish, English, bilingual, uh, a few more activities in that category, mostly in the children and teens section. Um, but one way to add another layer to the puzzling activity is to include puzzles of places or themes important to your community. Uh, this puzzle here was custom made from an image of the Fort Jefferson Lighthouse in Garden Key that's part of the collections of the state archives and is available on Florida Memory. The activity of doing a puzzle becomes a kind of a document analysis, which lets you notice details and develop a sense of wonder in a deeper way than maybe just looking at a photograph. 
Another way to bring your local community history into your programming is to find any one of a number of timeline games out there and add in your own custom cards about your library, your community, people or places in your community. In this version of the game, a player um, holds the card in their hand and reads a fact out loud without saying the date to, their to the people they're playing with. When the other players try and guess where it goes, and then the other players try and guess where it goes on the timeline. In this example, we have um, in 1913, the first uh, crossword puzzle was invented. In 1927, transparent sealing tape, later known as scotch tape, was invented around this time. And in 1933, the opening of the first drive-in movie theater occurred. Okay, I'm going to add in a fact from the Division of Library and Information Services. Are you ready to play? And you can do this in chat. Um, so you're going to say where you think this card goes. Is it uh, before 1913, after 1913, uh, between 1913 and 1927, or is it the same year as one of these cards? Okay, the uh, this, this fact is W.T. Cash became Florida's first state librarian in this year. What do you think? The answer is 1927. It was the same year that Scotch tape was invented, if that can help you remember it now. Thanks for playing. Um, I know many of you are already working with your local museums in a number of ways, including sharing programming, loaning museum passes. If you're looking for a way to add more museums to your repertoire, the Florida Association of Museums has an online database where you can search museums across the state. You can search by region to find a museum near you or by type or subject to find a particular subject or theme. And don't forget the Florida Humanities for their Speakers Bureau and funding opportunities. And we'll also put those links in the chat. I'm uh, gonna turn this over now to Beth Golding, who's our State Archivist and Chief of the Bureau of Archives and Records Management. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and turn it over to Beth. This might take a second as we get our slides uh, coordinated. Thank you, Katrina. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to share the screen. And if someone can indicate in chat or holler, if you can see my screen so I can go ahead and move forward with this. You see this? We're good, Beth. Yes, we can see you. Okay, great. Thank you. Again, I'm Beth Golding. I'm the State Archivist. Uh, work with Katrina in the Division of Library and Information Services. And uh, Katrina asked me to talk to you for a few minutes this afternoon about uh, how archives can partner with libraries and museums. Um, and so I'm going to give you <coughs> excuse me, a few examples of how we have done that here at the State Archives. Um, just want to start out with um, a few general points about, about what I'll be talking about. Um, one is what do archives have, um, and, and of course we've got historical records that um, can help you learn about the past, learn about people and communities and events um, and your uh, environment um, and how people live and work and, and uh, play. And those records um, can be used in a, in a variety of ways, uh, including, excuse me, including in partnership with libraries and museums for your programming. <coughs> excuse me, apologize. Um, so I'll talk about <coughs> a bit about what libraries, what archives can do with libraries and museums. <coughs> And I promise that um, all my slides don't look like a bunch of words. So this is the last slide full of words you'll have to look at. <clears throat> so um, here's an example, or a couple of examples um, of things that, that archives can do. Um, and, and one thing that we've done uh, a number of times is, is actually loan collection items or facsimiles of items 
two museums. Um, and these are two uh, examples from recent years. Uh, on the left, uh, image of Mary McLeod Bethune from one of our historical manuscript collections. Um, you can see it's it's kind of in a cardboard sort of frame in the collection. And this is a on the left, a digitized image of that print um, that we and we actually loaned that physical item to the National Portrait Gallery um, at the Smithsonian um, for an exhibit that they had uh, commemorating the uh, centennial of the 19th Amendment um, and um, in, in 1920. So this was uh, a loan. Uh, it was on loan to the Smithsonian from March of 2019 through January of 2020 uh, for their, uh, their exhibit, Votes for Women, a Portrait of Persistence, um, part of a very large exhibit that they did uh, commemorating the 19th Amendment. Um, and uh, if you're going to loan an actual collection item to someone, it might as well be the Smithsonian because they really know how to take care of stuff. Um, and and they're, they're a reliable institution that we could count on. We could get a facility report from them uh, telling us about their environmental uh, standards and their security and so on, uh, so that we know the item is safe with them. Um, this item on the right is a document that is actually currently on loan to the U.S. Capitol Visitor Center for an exhibit they have. Um, so one of the things that we do is loan actual collection items to museums um, for exhibit and display purposes. And as you can see, I don't learn when it comes to technology. I keep hitting the wrong thing to advance the slides. Um, another thing we do with, with museums, in this case, this is a house museum, a historic site, a historic home in Tallahassee, is um, provide digitized images and facsimiles for displays. So on the left, we've got a kiosk that's a physical display, um, an enlarged image of a, a sort of um, aerial 3D map of old Tallahassee uh, with specific sites pointed out on that map. And each of those sites has a little information card <clears throat> on this kiosk um, with an image, uh, an old image of that site and a newer image of that site and some historical information under the flap here, um, providing historical context to the old and the new. These images coming from the State Archives photographic collection. Um, and then on the right, uh, this looks like a desk, but it's actually a big touch screen. It's a virtual exhibit. Uh, and each of these documents and images most of them come from the State Archives collections as well. Each of them can be enlarged and moved around on this big touch screen, sort of like what you can do on your um, smartphone or tablet. You can enlarge these to read certain portions. Um, some of these exhibits even come with, uh, the museum has done uh, audio recordings uh, so that, for example, they are uh, reading from diary pages of, um, this Ellen Call Long. This is this is the Grove Museum, which is the uh, home of Territorial Governor Richard Keith Call and his family and descendants. Uh, and his daughter Ellen Call Long uh, lived at the house for many years, uh, and so there are many documents of hers that are displayed here. Uh, those documents all come from a collection at the State Archives of the Call family papers. Uh, so we're using um, facsimiles or digitized images to partner with a museum uh, to create uh, and interpret displays. Uh, this is another similar situation with another historic home and house museum in Tallahassee, the Knott House, uh, with the Knott family, a uh, very prominent Tallahassee um, family, uh, lived there for many, many years. Uh, it is now undergoing a, a reinterpretation, um, which involves uh, archive staff working with site and museum staff um, to help locate uh, historical records to help in this reinterpretation. Uh, the Knott family papers are at the State Archives, uh, and uh, those are available for us, for the museum folks, for anyone to look at. 
um, and, and were involved uh, with the committee doing this reinterpretation to help them do historical research in these collections. Um, so that's another example of using the collections at the state archives uh, to assist museums in uh, interpreting and uh, exhibiting. Um, this was a, a partnership with the Leroy Collins Leon County Public Library uh, about this time last year. Um, they did a, a big read project uh, based on Toni Morrison's Beloved. Um, and uh, they asked us to partner with them for some public programming. Uh, and what we were able to do is work with them um, to create some uh, display panels with some historical information and uh, images uh, of uh, photos and documents from the State Archives collections. Um, the, the library, the county library did a number of events during this time, and this all culminated in an event that we did together, um, a public presentation and display uh, at the State Archives and State Library facility of historical records from the archives, materials from the State Library, uh, and a presentation in which uh, we discussed using uh, archival records, historical records, to enhance our understanding of the themes uh, that were discussed uh, in, in Beloved. Um, and so that, that is a, a really good way for archives and libraries to work together in exhibits and public programming. Um, and uh, another thing we can do is, is kind of go beyond the, the glam institutions, the galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. Um, we can all, the GLAM institutions can also work with other uh, types of organizations. Um, and this is one example uh, where a, a local park in Tallahassee um, has walking paths. And along those walking paths, they have these historical panels and, and kiosks with, again, some historical information and some images, many of which uh, are drawn from the collections of the state archives. And of course, every single time I walk in that park, I feel obligated to say to whoever, whoever I'm with, hey, that's from the state archives. Um, I just feel the need to say that. Um, I think they're tired of hearing it, but, um, but it's, it's a good way to get um, your, uh, your word out uh, in other settings than within the archives or the library or the museum. Um, and a, a nearby display as well, um, commemorating the, the civil rights movement, um, where this monument has a number of images that come from the State Archives collections as well. Um, so that is pretty much what I wanted to uh, discuss with you, just a few examples of how archives uh, can work with libraries and museums. Um, I'm happy, if I can find my way back to the chat, I'm happy to um, answer any questions you have, or you're free to unmute yourself and uh, just ask any questions. Uh, so we'll have a, a moment for that, and then I will turn it back over to you, Katrina. Thank you, Beth. Um, yeah, please, if you have questions, uh, put them in chat or unmute yourselves. And while we're waiting for people to do that, I have a couple of questions. Beth, if a library wanted um, to use some of the images or, or copies of, of the documents from the archives in an exhibit or to go along with a book discussion, um, how would they do that? Um, you can contact us at, the easiest thing is archives at, this is an email address, archives at dos.myflorida.com. And in fact, let me just pop that into the chat right now. Um, AR, how do you spell archives, Katrina? A R C H I V E S. Yes. Oh. At .myflorida .com. Um, Email us and, and let us know what you're looking for. Um, you can also get on floridamemory.com and uh, do your own search for photos or, or documents. You, you are free to download those, um, or you can get uh, high resolution uh, images uh, for, a, for a fee. Um, but we are we're happy to help you find something that um, matches with your theme. 
Uh, and then once you once you have the item, the, the copy or the digitized file, once you have that, you are free to make whatever use of that you would like. Thank you, Beth. We have um, some questions in the chat that I don't think I know the answer to. How expensive are walking paths? That I, I don't know, but if you've ever paved a driveway, you probably have have some idea. Um, I, I have no idea that would be something that you might want to contact your local public works department um, to discuss. Uh, we weren't we were not involved with the physical uh, construction of the historical kiosk uh, or panels that are on those kiosks um, on in that park. Um, our, our role was um, helping to identify and, and provide images and historical information for those. So the, the pricing information, I'm sorry, I, I don't have any, any information for you on that. Oh, getting the images from the, okay. Um, we, we have a fee schedule depending on the resolution of the images that you're looking for. Um, and I can actually, if you've got a moment, I can look that up while Katrina keeps you entertained. Sure. And I, and I want to say there's a, a, a fairly low cost for the high resolution images, um, and, and Beth will get you the exact um, uh, price for that. The, the lower resolution um, images that are on the web are free to use. You can just download them. And how long would it take to get the permission to use those? I have an answer, but I'm going to let Beth give you the more official answer. Right. Um, you do not need our permission to use anything for any purpose. Once, once you have it, once you download it on your own or um, purchase a, a higher resolution copy from us, once you have that in hand, um, you do not need to get our permission to use it for any purpose as many times as you, as you like. Um, they're, they're free for everyone to use. So our, our fee schedule for, um, for the digital files is for 600 DPI is $10, for 900 DPI is $20, and for 1200 DPI is $30. Uh, for um, that's if we need to scan it for, for prints. Uh, if you're looking for prints, um, we also have uh, fees depending on the size of the print you're looking for. Does that, does that answer the, the question? Yeah, thanks, Beth. And um, I don't know if you threw the, the link in chat yet, but if you get a chance to do that, are you, are you gonna be signing oh. off or will you be around if people have more questions later? I, I, I'll be here. Um, I'll drink some water so that my throat is is not clogging up. And the, the, I did put in the link to for our, our email, but I'll, I'll put it in again because I might have gotten lost in, in the other questions. And now I have learned to spell archives. Right. And the link to the fee schedule, too, if you can. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Oh, actually, and, and if you are on Florida Memory looking at the photographs, the, the fee schedule, the fees are sort of built into the information under each photo. Right. If you pull up any photo, if you go to floridamemory.com um, and pull up any photograph and click on the order tab, uh, you will get the fees for uh, ordering prints and for order, ordering digital scans. Um. Uh, thank you so much, Beth. Um, and, and really, please do reach out to them. They, they really are here to, to provide this resource for all of you. Um, now, uh, we're going to have a little time uh, for you to, to uh, talk and brainstorm. We'll have a little general discussion first, and then we'll have some time for breakout sessions. Um, so uh, first, I have a little bit of news from the division. I'm going to turn my camera back on here so I can be with you. Um, we do anticipate having the new Florida Library Youth Program consultant on board early this spring. So um, we have a hopeful start date. It's not entirely official yet. As soon as it's entirely official, we'll let you know. Um, but we're anticipating that coming up before the summer. Um, look for our upcoming webinar on stories, art, and community designing intergenerational programs. 
which I think will tie nicely into this theme. We're tying, trying to tie it into the summer reading theme. And we did have a question come in earlier for the group. Um, I'm looking for ideas for adult programs, presenters, grab and go kits, and how to increase participation. So um, as we get ready, we're gonna send you into some breakout sessions so that you can talk to each other. And that's gonna be 10 minutes and then we'll come back. Um, while you're there, you can still communicate with the presenters through the chat, or if you want to call yourself back into the main room, you can. The breakout session will last 10 minutes. Uh, while you're there, we ask if you choose a moderator and a person to report back to the main group. They can be the same person or different people. Um, I'll give you some starting questions to think about, but um, you can talk about really whatever is most important to you. Um, as you think about reporting back, this is uh, partly to share with everybody else that, that's here. And also I've heard from a number of people that won't be able to attend, but will be watching this um, recording. And they're really interested in hearing what you have to say and being part of this discussion kind of that way. So, uh, so those are your two audiences as you think about what you want to report back, the folks that are already here and the librarians across the state that couldn't be here, librarians and library staff. Um, some questions to get you started. What do you have planned for this summer? And is there anything you've heard in this uh, presentation that you want to use? Um, get ready to uh, launch. This always feels like going into space for me. And we will see you in 10 minutes. And the people are back from the breakout sessions. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a good trip. Um, do we have a volunteer to go first? Who wants to share what their group talked about and what you'd like to share? <laughs> Unless I'll do it at once. I'm <laughs> just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I put my thing in chat about um, hitting up the national parks to do um, distance learning, um, distant programs. It's the, all my contacts are kind of, I put it in the chat and they will do it for you. I mean, I don't know if all of those will, some of them, I know the three in South Florida will, because I've done mm -hmm. those in the one um, Cape Cod, but those are just some resources. Uh, uh, great. Which programs did you do? Um, I did because it's national, because I do them in July because it's mm -hmm. Park and Recreation Month. So it's Biscayne, um, Everglades, and Big Cypress. And, and we'll have a ranger and they'll take the iPad. Sometimes they'll take the iPad out in the field and they just do an overview of the national parks. And last year I ventured out and I thought, oh, I should have thought of this earlier. And I got Kate Cod. Um, I got a Boston one to come in. And this year I'm working with um, the Alaska to get Alaska in uh, Georgia and somewhere else. I forgot what other state. Acadia. Um to see if they want to do it. And I'm also using um, our agency, Bower County. We have a park and rec. So I've called them and I'm in talking with them to, to present a program to promote their stuff also for parks because where else do you get together at? You go to a park. So Cape Cod is and wonderful it, in summertime. Two and one. Mm -hmm. Cape Cod is wonderful in summertime, but um, yeah. there can be some pretty big crowds. Yeah. Oh, so keep year that round. in mind. Well, well okay. see, well, the weather is, the weather is so bad most of the year. They're really, summertime's the best time to go. It's like England. If you go to England, you want to go in summertime, something like that. Thank you. Sure. Who else wants to jump in and share what they talked about? Um, and I think the, the the room chats are not available to everybody. So if you put some resources in the room chat, it's okay to share them again out here. I'll share. Sounds good. Hi, um, I'm from the Lee Gandhi Library System. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, so our um, breakout room, we dis discussed doing um, a film series last year, so we might carry that over and uh, uh, um, cover archaeology, do a uh, friendship slash kindness um, activities with the 70s topic, uh, with a 70s theme. Um, we have also yoga. Um, and then um, 
I pitched in the idea of doing a cooking themed escape room for adults. Um, and then uh, somebody else- how, how, how would that work? Uh, that sounds really interesting, a cooking themed escape room. Well, my idea originally, because I work out, um, I work in outreach, was I visit a lot of migrant camps. So I was thinking of um, asking my moms of their of country of origin and just creating an escape room that uses the, the uh, ingredients that are common in all their cultures to be able to escape or break into something, right? Um, but somebody suggested that we could have like a little um, cooking presentation, whether virtually or in person, and then based on that knowledge, um, take into consideration that, or, you know, not everybody has the same um, knowledge, um, taking into consideration what they learned that day, they can go now and do the escape room as the second part of, of the program. And I think that will be super fun. I mean, it's uh, easily adaptable. You can use large prints, you can use Braille, you can use um, um, pictures for those that have lower literacy, you can use sound. You know, there's so many ways that you can adapt it to include everybody. That sounds great, really, really original. Thank you. I can jump in for my group. Um, I think I was in room nine. I'm also from Lee County. Hey, everybody, I see some familiar names. Um, our group talked about um, along the theme of the summer doing Pride Month programs or Juneteenth programming. Um, there was some uh, puzzle ideas. Um, somebody had uh, has plans to do a community jam session, like for um, people to bring their instruments and kind of play collect, you know, together, play like, you know, together instead of not, not quite like an open mic night, but everybody's kind of like starts a song or teaches a song or some kind of thing and everyone plays collectively. Um, I'm working on a kindness bingo for our system that would run all, all summer long. And so um, there would be a virtual way to do that and also a paper-based uh, bingo challenge with you know kindness prompts. Um, somebody else had questions about health and financial literacy programming and finding presenters for that because those are popular as well. I think I remembered everything, but if anyone else from my group, if I forgot anything, jump in. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Melissa. Um, I can keep going because uh, another Lee County person here. Hey, guys. Um, so I'll just continue with that. So um, our group, we discussed um, a little bit about the puzzles and a little bit more about like passive programming things that I think people are just getting back into to doing or I'm sorry, self-directed programming um, that people are just coming back um, to doing. So, you know, the puzzle thing, I said, try it. It is a wonderful thing that I have going on at, at, in my branch. People love it. It's multi-generational. Um, it's a community thing as well as coloring. These are really simple things that we can kind of put back into the community and, you know, keep an eye on it, obviously. Um, got some pesky teenagers or children that like to maybe ruin it for everyone. But, you know, other than that, it's been really, really great um, for our specific location. So we talked a little bit um, about that. We are working on some grab and go kits, um, still doing some crafts. Not everyone is able to hang in a branch and do something or attend programming or anything like that. So this is something that they can do at home. Um, I think we're going to be working on some bookmarks, possibly, so be kind to your books, um, as well as um, just some other ideas, just along the lines of, of kindness. And we had Jason um, from Moat Aquarium in our room, so he gave us some really great ideas, and I think he's been posting some links in the chat. Um, we did talk about, you know, how to do an escape room. Someone had done a virtual one um, and, and talked about trying to bring things back into um, the branch, I'm trying to go back here. He provided, as we were talking about bingo, um, because I also brought up a scavenger hunt that I did at the branch. It was pretty good. Um, definitely another multi-generational program, um, just a scavenger hunt around the branch. They can come in and do it as they'd like. Um, he provided a resource called bingobaker.com um, through our chat, just to help if anyone wants to do a bingo. 
that was pretty good. Um, contacting your county extension service for seed kits, because I brought up, you know, kindness to the earth, um, doing something with that. So contact your county extension, maybe see what they can do for you. Um, and then he was going into something else and then we got cut off. I don't know if you wanted to bring that back up, Jason. Maybe you don't, I don't know. But yeah, that's kind of the gist of it, of what we talked about. There he is, hey, Jason. Yeah, so as I was saying, I got into this from the um, Oceans of Possibility uh, event last summer and uh, found out about the wonderful world of libraries and uh, trying to think about ways of maybe offering a similar experience, not only for um, uh, younger folks this year, but also for uh, all adults uh, uh, programming as well. Uh, most of what I do is virtual, but um, we also have groups that go out locally to uh, Manatee, Sarasota, and Charlotte uh, that go into the libraries so we can bring the uh, experience to you. Thanks, Jason. Anybody else want to jump in? I have a question. This is Ramona. Uh, Jason, what agency are you from? Uh, we do all ages from uh, pre-K to gray, as we say. No, agency, agency. What are you, you're not libraries, right? Oh, yeah. No, we do have a uh, private library here, and then uh, we work with our local Sarasota County Library. So, uh, yeah, we're so what kind of a, a service provider from. to libraries. So that's how I found out about this organization and uh, Zoom call today. So hope I'm uh, welcome. Uh, Jason, to are you with Parks? Yeah, I'm trying to figure that out. You still haven't answered my question. I, I want to know who it's you It's Moat Marine. It's Moat. Yeah, we're an independent nonprofit Marine Research Laboratory. Oh, uh, we were founded you. back in the 1950s okay. by Dr. Eugenie Clark, uh, better known as the Shark Lady. And so we have a uh, institutional library on site, and then we work with our county library, of course, a lot for programming. Oh, great. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Um, Absolutely. I've done some work with the Baruch Marine Institute in Georgetown, South Carolina. So. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Moat has some some great uh, resources. Thanks, thanks for sharing those, Jason. Can you put that in the chat, please? Yeah, I'll put some links in there. And if anyone wants to connect with us virtually, I'll start with that link and uh, happy to uh, share everything that we know about doing this kind of cool stuff with you all. Great, thank you so much. Thanks for asking that question, Ramona. No, you're welcome. Anybody else wanna jump in and share either something that you talked about in your group or something that's just occurred to you or something that you'd just like to share with the group? Hi, Liz Akers chiming in. Um, yeah, so we talked about um, several things. One was a um, like intergenerational crafting hours. So um, sort of a teach, teach. So um, younger folks who are skilled at whatever, you know, craft could teach older and vice versa. Um, kind of low pressure. Um, kind of like the idea of art as process and really not the end result. So very intergenerational. You come in and just like whatever whatever you create, it's the, the process of painting or sculpture or um, that type of thing with maybe a theme, a tree. And so it really doesn't matter. You're not getting judged on your skill. Um, Somebody came up with an idea in for one of our meeting rooms is like adult size pillow forts for like adults to kind of like if you're you know if you live in kind of a an apartment that's maybe crowded or you just kind of want a little like room for yourself it would be like it'd be uh like fairy lights or twinkly lights and um you could charge your phone maybe have a tablet, a reading tablet in there that you can just read and kind of get away. Um, not everybody can have a little vacation, so it might be kind of a cool place to chill. Um, what else? Oh yeah, um, like a poker night, but with like um, candy as the, um, as the tokens and you really, it's a really helpful skill to like, so maybe people who are, are skilled at it, maybe a little older, 
can teach it and learn like patience and how to be, you know, make some smart moves. And, um, and then we just kind of discussed having like an outdoor movie night. We are, um, our library is right, kind of right in front of a, a huge track. So there's like a big track and basketball courts, um, but maybe we could like show a movie on the side of the building and have like popcorn and um, just something for the whole family to just spread out a blanket and, and have that in the summertime. So, um, and then let me see. Um, yeah, Ramona mentioned um, doing like um, genealogy events, sort of like a, having almost like a family reunion um type of thing getting involved in genealogy and um if she wants to add to that any more details that would be great but um that's it from yeah, here that's fine that's fine it was just mom intergenerational though like you know grandparents and grandchildren working together around it well thank thanks. you yeah, thanks everybody. Those are some wonderful ideas and I, I wish I could come to all of them. We're uh, at the end of our hour and I, I wanna go ahead and close up because I know a lot of people have to get to the desk or get to other obligations. Um, but I wanna thank everybody for coming and sharing your ideas and um, we will send out an email with uh, resources and these slides. And if you want to email me back and keep sharing these uh, resources, we will we will do that. Are you Thank going you. to share the chat as well? Yes, we will. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Yep. And the uh, survey will come out as well um, to uh, ask, you know, um, uh, in the email and help us keep uh, these programs going and, and know what you want to do next. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thanks.